did you finally come to submit your resignation because you couldn't take it anymore? That was said by my ex-wife, Sophia. My name is Michael Taylor, a 30-year-old divorcee. I divorced Sophia when I was 24. I met Sophia by chance. She happened to be a classmate from middle school. She approached me when I was just starting at my current company. Are you Michael? Yes, I'm Michael, but... Don't you remember? I'm Sophia. We were in the same class in middle school, right? What? Sophia, I didn't recognize you. You've become such a beautiful woman. And so, we ended up going out to eat that day. I joined a company as a salesperson, and she was a beautiful receptionist. She graduated from a prestigious university, and at that time, I just told her I graduated from an ordinary one. The truth is, I can trust women. This goes back to when I was in elementary school. My father worked for a securities company and was very busy. My mother also worked full time, but one day, she suddenly stopped coming home. Hey, Dad, where did Mom go? Michael, Mom isn't coming back. What? My father was filling in a divorce letter. I was almost finishing elementary school, and I understood what it meant. I never heard from my mom again. At that time, my grandmother, who was at our house, said that my mother left because she fell in love with another man. My heart became void. My father liked Italian and often read books in Italian. Back then, I also borrowed my father's books and translated them with a dictionary. I didn't feel like doing anything else. You like Italian, right? Or how about staying at your uncle's place? Your cousin Alex also likes Italian, and I'm going to be busy with work again, my father said quietly. After my mother left, I felt as though I had locked away all the happy memories of going out with my family on weekends along with the joy I felt with my family and friends in some corner of my heart. I was filled with sadness. I was an only child but used to be outgoing. I didn't hate studying and enjoyed playing games with friends going back and forth to each other's houses. However, I lost the desire to invite friends over, and I just ate the deli food my father bought every day, locked myself in my room, and did my homework alone. Classmates asked me various questions as I had become silent, but I couldn't answer any of them. One day, an unknown lady came to our house and started living with us. I wonder if Dad is going to marry this lady. It was then that I told my father, Dad, I'm going to live with my uncle, and moved. My uncle and aunt welcomed me warmly. Especially Alex, two years older than me, was glad to have me. But Alex was busy with tutoring and Italian classes. Having transferred schools, I didn't make friends easily, so I contacted my father and asked if I could also attend tutoring and Italian classes with Alex. Although my days became filled with studying, I liked studying, so it wasn't a hardship. Alex often helped me with my studies, which I appreciated. Eventually, Alex and I even started speaking in Italian. My uncle and aunt worked for foreign companies and had lived in Italy, so their Italian was fluent, and gradually, our family conversations shifted to Italian. Life with them was more enjoyable than living with my father. One of my uncle's college friends lived in England, and Alex went to study there after graduating from middle school. When I was in the second year of middle school, Alex said, Michael, it's fun here. You should come to high school here too. And I decided to go to England for high school. And, just like Alex, I managed to get into Oxford University. After graduating in three years, Alex had found a job in England and I also got a call from Alex and worked in sales in England for a year. After that, I returned home and joined my current company. I still hadn't heard from my mother. Despite my distrust of women due to my mother, I fell in love at first sight with Sophia when I met her again after 10 years. However, I kept quiet about my educational background and upbringing. 
Sophia had many friends within the company, and I didn't want my educational background to be talked about. Being thought of as smart by the employees seemed bothersome to me. Of course, the HR department and President Thompson knew. Sophia and I often went out for meals or to the movies. We found that we shared a taste in movies, and she started visiting my apartment. I was living in alone at the time, and our relationship deepened quickly. We got married swiftly within a year. Sophia still wanted to work, so she continued as a receptionist within the company, while I was busy with sales. In the sales department, there was an incredibly handsome and refreshing senior, Tom Jackson. He was five years older than me and had excellent sales performance. He was already a manager at a young age. At first, I spent my days being taken around for sales visits by my seniors. I had learned sales pitches in England, but now I was learning American sales techniques for my seniors. There were many late nights due to entertaining clients. Sophia, who had been living alone, was good at cucking and would wait for me. But that only lasted for the first year. Struggling to improve my sales performance, Tom would say to me, Hey, Michael, make more calls, secure more appointments, and get moving. Yes, Tom, my apologies. Saying that, I would compile materials on the computer and rush out. Nights of entertaining became more frequent, leaving me exhausted every evening. When I got home, Sophia wasn't there. Checking my phone, I found a message, I'm going to a reunion today, I'll be late, so go ahead and sleep. There was no dinner prepared. Too tired to cook, I went to the nearby convenience store, bought a ready-made meal, and ate it. I decided to check Sophia's emails earlier from now on. I had trouble falling asleep, but it seemed Sophia came back around 2 a.m. We were renting an apartment, but we had separate bedrooms. We didn't plan on having children yet, and I often came home late. Even on the rare days off, Sophia would meet with friends, and our time as a couple began to diverge. On the other hand, I gradually got used to the sales job, and though busy, my performance started to improve slightly. A colleague, Ryan, approached me. Michael, are you free tonight? Let's go out for a drink if you're okay with it. I'm free tonight. It would be nice for a change. So, we decided to go out for drinks. Ryan had a bottle kept at his favorite bar, and he offered me a drink. Thanks, Ryan. I'll take you up on that. You come here often, huh? Yeah, sometimes for entertaining clients. But it's a nice, relaxing place, isn't it? Yeah, it's quiet and somehow comforting. As we were talking, the bar's owner served us a delicious dish. Been busy every day. I wanted some place to relax. Yeah, sales is tough. I just go with the flow even when I get scolded, Ryan said with a grin. And so, we spent the evening leisurely drinking together. That loud Tom is about to become a department head, you know. Jer, he's young but talented. And he's handsome, a Harvard grad, the complete package. Harvard grad, huh? I didn't know that. I'm just from a local university. For me, my uncle suggested this company, and I ended up joining, kind of just went with the flow. I was just happy to be hired. After all, it's a major company. Yeah. But don't you think that Tom acts a bit too high and mighty? Well, he is a boss, so maybe that's just how it is. You are so earnest, Michael. Don't push yourself too hard and end up sick. You've got a beautiful wife, after all. Thanks. Being earnest is pretty much all I've got going for me. There's a company drinking party coming up, so let's hit it up again then. Yeah, let's do that. And so, Ryan and I took separate taxis home. Sophia said she was going out to dinner with friends again today, so she wasn't home when I got back. This kind of life continued. One day, there was a party because Tom had been promoted to department manager, 
and the employees gathered. Congratulations on your promotion, Tom. Ryan said this as he was pouring beer. The other female employees were also fawning over the handsome Tom, who seemed to remember all their names, giving off the impression of a ladies' man. Thank you everyone for today, but please continue to work hard moving forward. The ladies have been doing especially well. Tom is always sweet towards the women. Sitting close to Tom, Sophia was complimented. Sophia, you are always so beautiful. Well, all the receptionists are beautiful too. Tom, in a good mood, had the women pour him beer. Ryan and I were enjoying the food, minching away. The dishes were surprisingly tasty, and since I'm not much of a drinker, I enjoyed chatting with Ryan and the seniors. Then, Tom, being fussed over by my wife, said, Sophia, pour me some more beer. I was not unhappy. Come on, Sophia, have a drink too, and Sophia, being poured beer by Tom, seemed to be enjoying herself. I wish this would end soon. I wanted to leave the party. Looking closer, Sophia seemed unsteady on her feet. She's drunk too much. I thought to myself, is your wife okay? She's had quite a bit to drink. Ryan whispered to me. Yeah, seems like she's had a fair bit. I'll take her home later. Comes getting a bit too carried away with all the attention, don't you think? Really, I agreed, and Ryan and I shared a wry smile as the party finally ended. Then I guided the staggering Sophia to a taxi and headed home. Sophia was half asleep at the entrance. Sophia, you've drunk too much. I might have overdone it a bit. The next day was a day off, so I carried Sophia to bed as she was. I also took a shower and rested. The next morning, waking up a bit late, I heard the shower running. Sophia's in the shower. I washed my face and was toasting some bread in the kitchen. Did you sleep well? I've made some toast. Have some. I feel kind of hungover, not much of an appetite. Saying that, Sophia went to the sofa and started fiddling with her phone, so I ate two slices of toast. And as I was relaxing and watching TV, Sophia suddenly started getting ready to go out. Huh? Are you going out again today? Yeah, I totally forgot. I'm meeting a high school friend today. I see. I was thinking maybe we could go shopping together for once. I'll do the shopping. Let's go together next week. Saying that, Sophia went out in daylight. For the first six months of our marriage, we lived happily, but this is what our Wiccan always looked like. In the evening, I received an email on my phone from Sophia. I'm going to the bar with my best friend today, so I'll be home late again. I just replied with a got it after reading that. I opened the fridge picked something random for dinner, and ate alone. While cleaning the messy kitchen, I started noticing other things. So I vacuumed and did the laundry as well. Sophia had completely stopped doing any housework. I figured she would probably go out again tomorrow. Beautiful Sophia loves fashion, spends her weekend bustling around visiting hair salons, going to the gym with friends, and more. And as expected, she went to the hair salon the next day. Feeling extremely bored, I texted Ryan. Turns out he was free too, so we decided to have lunch together. It's rare to see you on a weekend. Where's your wife? She went to the hair salon today. Well, she is a receptionist, after all. That's unavoidable. Yeah, besides, with all the beauty treatments and aesthetics, women seem to have it tough. But these days, men also go for aesthetics, right? I'm not really into it though. Yeah, I'm not much interested either. Being in sales, appearance is important, but still. Right. But Tom seems like the type who would go for aesthetics, don't you think? His skin is all smooth, it's kind of funny. It does seem like something he would do. Ryan and I laughed about it. It felt hot to enjoy lunch like this as grown men, but it had been a while since I last laughed. Then, 
life returned to its usual pace, busy with sales work. One night, on my way back from a client dinner, I saw Sophia getting into Tom's luxury car. With a bad feeling, I waited for Sophia to return home to talk about it, but she came back drunk and it was impossible to have a serious conversation. I then considered hiring a private investigator. One day, I received a message from Ryan. Do you have time for a drink? He asked, and we met at his regular spot. As usual, Ryan had a bottle kept there, and I accepted his offer. After a while, Ryan hesitantly spoke up. Sorry for calling you out of the blue. There's something I need to tell you, Michael. Actually, I saw your wife on my way back from a client dinner. So, um, Ryan took a sip of his drink. And well, I was concerned, so I took a photo with my phone. This is Sophia, right? He showed me his phone. Looking closely, it was a photo of Tom and Sophia walking arm in arm in the city. I took a big gulp of my drink. Yay, that's definitely Tom and my wife. I once saw Sophia getting into Tom's luxury car after a client dinner. Is that so? We fell silent for a while. I didn't want to know any more about Sophia. I immediately took out my phone and canceled the investigation. The investigators for me mailed me to terminate the ongoing investigation, noting that there was nothing to report on Tom and Sophia's activities over the past three days. I quietly said to Ryan, I'm going to get a divorce. What? Sophia always said she was meeting friends at night, and she always came home late. It feels like we were over as a couple a long time ago. It's not your fault or anything, Ryan. I see. But I've been troubled for a long time, and thanks to you, Ryan, I was able to make a decision. Could you forward me that photo? Are you sure? I'll send it then. Ryan sent me the photo. One day, when I came home early, Sophia was also home unusually early. Sophia, we need to talk about something important. What is it? What's going on between you and Tom? What do you mean? He's just my boss. Really? Is this how a boss and his subordinate behave? I said, showing her two photos on my phone. Oh, you caught on. Huh? I started being interested in Tom a while ago. After all, he's a Harvard grad and such a looker, right? Plus, he's a manager and makes way more money than you. Sophia defiantly justified herself. I fell silent for a while. We're done, aren't we? I can't believe Sophia turned out to be this kind of woman. It's my fault for falling for her at first sight. That's what I thought to myself. And then, I uttered just one sentence. Please, let's get a divorce. That's what I said. Sophia looked stunned but then said, okay, and pulled out the divorce papers, which were already prepared for me to sign. I was surprised by that, but the document was already signed on her part, leaving only my signature needed. It seemed she had wanted to divorce me all along. I signed immediately and took the papers to the county courthouse. Looking at the paper, I was reminded of my father from a distant memory. I felt like I had lost my heart then, just as I had when I was a child. The next day, I took a day off and spent it alone. I had Sophia take the day off and then asked her, could you pack your things and leave as soon as possible? So, she started packing her belongings. I asked her to take only what she needed. I decided to dispose of everything else myself. And that evening, Sophia left. The next day at the office, Tom approached me. Hey, Michael, taking a day off while you can't even make decent sales. People like you should be sent somewhere way off. Tom, do you mean a demotion? I understand, but could I have a moment of your time, if you don't mind? All right, shall we step out someplace nearby? So, Tom and I went to a cafe near the office. About my wife. What about Sophia? Could you take a look at this? Saying that, 
I showed Tom the photo of him and Sophia walking arm in arm, looking cozy together. I see, and what about this? Sophia confessed to me, you know, or are you here to beg for money, wanting some sort of compensation? Yes, considering we were married. How much do you want? $30,000 would be sufficient. I see, that's a small amount, I'll pay it right away. I'll send you my bank account details later then. After that, Tom and I returned to the office. Back at the office, I said, Tom, regarding the demotion, I'll go and have a word with Mr. Thompson first, and then clear my desk. I went to the president's office. Knocking twice, I entered. Come in. Excuse me. Ah, uh, Michael, that's quite a misfortune. Take a seat, relax. Thank you. Actually, I had seen Tom and your ex-wife together before. It's unfortunate that Sophia turned out to be that kind of woman. It must be hard for you to stay in this company. Currently, there's a branch in Italy. With your excellent educational background, you should be able to enjoy your work there. What do you think? A branch in Italy. I understand. I'll do my best. That was my decision. I had already informed Mr. Thompson about the situation via mail in advance. And so, I ended up going to Italy. Returning to the office, I thanked all the employees, cleared my desk, and left the company. When I was leaving, Tom had a smirk on his face, and my ex-wife at the reception ignored me. The agreed amount from Tom had already been deposited in my account. Thus, I flew to the Italian branch. The employees there welcomed me and Mr. Thompson had arranged a place for me to live. It took me a while to get used to the job, but one day, I saw a familiar face. It was Alex. Hey, Alex. Michael, is that you? What brings you here? Why are you here, Alex? We both asked each other, surprised. That night, I went out to dinner with Alex. I'm so happy to see you again, Michael. Me too. Actually, I got demoted. What were you? Demoted? Did things not go well in the States? Well, kind of. My sales were okay, but I didn't get along with the manager back at the headquarters. I ended up marrying a classmate from middle school in America, but she, well, she got involved with the manager. What? You've been through a lot, and then you got demoted because of that manager. Sounds inconsistent. Maybe, but in the end, it was Mr. Thompson who pushed me forward. I see, I transferred here from England after Mr. Thompson offered me a position. You knew him. Mr. Thompson is a friend of my father. I had no idea. That's how it is, since you like Italian, maybe you're better off here. Did you end up divorcing? Yeah, I got a clean divorce, Italy's not bad. I'm the sales manager now. I'm looking forward to working with you, Michael. Thank you, boss. I enjoyed reuniting with my cousin Alex. Later, Alex and I started working together in sales. Alex was married to an Italian woman and had a cute blonde son. It seems that Alex's wife's sister also works here. Although the branch is quite large, so I hadn't had the chance to meet her yet. Work got busy, but Alex and I visited various companies. One day, I was invited to Alex's house. His lovely blonde wife and her sister, who looked just like her, were there. Alex's son was adorable and took a liking to me. I almost fell for the sister at first sight, but having learned from my past mistake, I had reverted to being wary of women. Alex's wife and her sister had spent some time in America as children so their English was excellent. I'm glad you could come, his wife said. You're as wonderful as your brother, her sister told me in English. We had a lavish meal and a great time that day. Sometimes I would visit Alex's house or he would recommend delicious restaurants as we worked hard. Three years later, Alex approached me with a proposal. There is a $1 million deal coming up. I'm interesting it to you, Michael. 
Of course, I'll accompany you. What? That's a huge responsibility. Can you send me the documents on my computer? I reviewed the documents sent by Alex multiple times. Gradually, I comprehended the contents with care. On the day of the business meeting, I presented to the client fluently in Italian. I answered all of the client's questions meticulously. Slowly, the client's face brightened into a smile. Then, Alex and I sealed the deal with a firm handshake from the client. Afterward, Alex and I were called by Chairman Morris. Alex, Michael, thank you for your efforts. I've heard a lot about you from President Thompson. To think you two are cousins. Please enjoy a leisurely meal together. Chairman Morris arranged a full course meal for us and then excused himself. Congratulations, Michael. Your Italian was excellent, Alex said. Thanks, Alex. I miss the days we spent together in England, I responded. After that, Alex and I enjoyed a feast and returned home. Subsequent negotiations were entrusted solely to me, and I successfully closed many deals. One day, I heard that Alex's sister-in-law wanted to speak with me, so I went to Alex's house. The conversation was about her desire to live in America eventually, and her wish to date me. I shared my family's past history with Alex present. When I was young, my mother suddenly disappeared. Then, I stayed with Alex's family for a while, went to study in England, returned to work in America, and got married once, but my wife cheated on me. I shared everything as it was. Both Alex's wife and her sister exclaimed how terrible my ex-wife was. I wanted to overcome my distrust of women. She was a beautiful woman with clear blue eyes and she shed tears for me. Her name was Lily. After sharing my past, Lily and I started dating. This time, we decided to take things slow and carefully understand each other's personalities. Two years passed. Five years had elapsed since I first met Lily. One day, Chairman Morris and Mr. Thompson visited the company. I had Mr. Thompson. And so, the conversation turned to Mr. Thompson and Chairman Morris. Actually, I've been appointed as the new president here by Chairman Morris, and for the significant achievements you've made, Michael, we'd like you to take over as president at the headquarters. Me, president. I'd also like to ask you, Michael, please take charge of the headquarters. Yes, thank you very much. Although surprised, this meant I would be returning to America. But before that, there was something I absolutely had to do. I told Lily about returning to America and also that I wanted her to be my secretary. Lily, would you come back to America with me and I'd like you to live with me as my business partner? Business or as your wife? My face turned red and I corrected myself. Yes, if you're willing, please become my wife, I said, extending my right hand. Lily took my hand firmly in both of hers and said thank you in English. Before returning to America, under the watchful eyes of Alex and his wife, Lily and I had a church wedding in Italy. Then, Lily and I went back to America together. We get married right away, and I went to the headquarters for the first time in a while with Lily. That's when I encountered Sophia, who I didn't want to see. Michael, couldn't stand being demoted and came to submit your resignation, she said, ever so sarcastically. Right then, the beautiful, blonde Lily took my hand and said, Mr. President, Chairman Morris is waiting for you. Sophia was shocked, President, Michael is the President. Then Lily said to Sophia in fluent English, Oh, haven't you heard? My husband has been excellent since his high school days in England and is an Oxford graduate. What, Oxford? Husband, Sophia and Tom, who was with her, were both astonished. Sophia's name tag read Sophia Bennett. Tom Bennett was pale, president, Oxford graduate. That blonde beauty is his wife. I couldn't help but laugh, realizing those two got married. Then Ryan came running. Michael, welcome back. 
Looking forward to working with you as the new president. I've always thought you might be a bit of a genius looking at your reports. Ryan welcomed me with a smile. Then, I greeted everyone at the headquarters and started my new role. Later, Lily gave birth to a beautiful blonde girl. Now, Lily, our adorable daughter, and I live happily together while safeguarding the company.